So welcome to GCSE Art and Design. I think the best way of explaining what it involves is to look at some students' work. And This is a sketchbook that contains some work on interiors. We set themes for each unit of coursework. This one happens to be interiors, but it could be just as easily landscapes or still life or beach or we change the themes as we go along. But we start by looking at artist work. Here's the work of a, an American artist called Edward Hopper. And this student has interpreted his work to produce an interesting title page. And most importantly, they've written a little bit about what they've done here and how they've done it. So they're documenting the work as they progress. We then ask them to do a mind map, which is basically a student showing us as many different ideas as they can based on the set theme. So you have the theme of interiors, which is identified in the middle of the mind map, but then the student's gone on to not only write down words connected with that theme but also find images which they presented using watercolours. We use a technique of collage as well to investigate the theme and develop images. Here the student has presented some work based on other images she's found and cut out and presented on a page of the sketchbook which could be um, used as, an, uh, as a research tool later in the, in the unit. And then we ask them to investigate their chosen artist a little bit more. So we have some information about the artist, we have some more examples of their work and we've got an art interpretation of one of their images done again with watercolours. And because Edward Hopper is what's known as a narrative artist, i.e. their paintings often tell a story or look as if they're a snippet from a film, we ask the students to um, invent a story or imagine a story based on their painting and then present that in the style of the artist. So there you have a nice double page based on their chosen artist. We do draw in art and design. I think the skill of drawing is very important. So whatever theme you are following, you will be asked to do a drawing, at least one drawing or two drawings based on that chosen theme. And as still life is part of interiors, this student chose to do a small still life based on shells and pebbles. We then ask them to produce their own photographs. This is really important. A lot of students would just go and do a Google search or, a, or some other search engine based to expand on the theme. We don't ask them to do that. We ask them to produce their own photographs so that the images they're producing, for example, uh, are original. It's their own image. This photograph, which everything is documented, but this photograph you'll see later on in the sketchbook has been developed into another piece of work. So here is the piece of work developed from that same photograph, again showing off the artist's skill with pencil. We then looked at another artist called James Rosenquist, who again another American artist who has produced paintings on the theme of interiors, in this case washing up draining on a draining board. As a development of that we asked the students to take their own photographs of draining boards and, or dishwashers and then uh, tables at meal time so this still links into the theme of interiors and then we ask them to develop one of these photographs into a large painting because that's what the work in the sketchbook is for it's, it's as a research tool to develop into final pieces so we can see here a basic colour study an outline study of that photograph which has then been developed into a more formal colour study in the sketchbook and then that piece of work then is transferred onto a larger scale so that the artist is being challenged to work on uh, A1 boards and there's the finished painting. This student happened to decide to develop this into a rather effective triptych so these are three paintings based on the theme of meal times and as an effective study or effective range, effective range of studies, they work really well. And then, as an additional part of this unit, we also ask the students to work in what's called mixed media. So this is a, a mixed media study based on that first painting. So this is actually composed of things like uh, bits of sawdust for toast, cardboard for the marmite lid, this is clay, 3D um, cup and saucer, and a bit of cloth here with the knife and fork on. So that is a nice 3D mixed media development of 
this original painting. So that is fairly typical of a unit of work. It's the three paintings, um, mixed media piece, but that could be a print or it could be another piece of clay work. It's not just about mixed media. All of that goes together to form um, a unit of coursework. And that is, in essence, is what the GCSE Art and Design um, is all about. It's about um, coming up with ideas, presenting work in a, an effective way, and being interested. So if you've enjoyed what you've done in Art and Design in Year 7 and 8, and you feel like you'd like to carry it on, then GCSE Art and Design would be for you. Um, in terms of the potential in careers, anybody who does a GCSE in Art and Design will be asked to come up with different ideas and in a lot of businesses and a lot of places of work they want interesting imaginative creative people so any part of work any work area that demands a bit of imagination and a bit of presentation and a bit of creativity GCSE Art and Design will help you along that route. I hope that's been helpful.